Sarah Miller with 107.5 Bolt FM, and uh, I have a special guest here. So, uh, Jake, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, where you're from? Well, my name is Jake Vaudland. I uh, was born in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, and grew up on a on a farm ranch near Big River called Sturgeon River Ranch. And we uh, had horses and stuff to take people out for rides and stuff like that. And that, and so that's sort of where I got the whole old timey side of things was growing up like that of course the house was heated with a wood stove and and all that sort of thing and uh was bussed into school in big river and then ended up moving to cut knife and that's where where i spend a bit of my time now and i first started getting into music about six seven years ago like i had always been interested in music and stuff but i had never really gotten good at any playing any instruments and I, I would not sing for anything and uh i've decided i tried playing the mandolin but i made so much racket on that i had to give that up and then about six seven years ago i decided to pick up the banjo figured maybe that would make me more popular in school or something but it didn't work out that way if anything it made them made them jealous and hate me more but anyway and then I uh, decided that wanted to have a band. And so another fellow that had grown up in the same area as me, just down the road, uh, also started playing banjo. And he also played guitar. Uh, so we wanted to get together. We ended up going on Telemiracle 42, I believe, together. And, uh, and then we decided that, well, if I wanted to be the lead singer, I'd have to learn how to sing and uh and play guitar so i had to learn how to play guitar and we started with that and not to we went for a couple of years actually and that was when i was still in school so we didn't have much opportunity to play a whole lot and then he unfortunately had to move to oklahoma so that's where he is now so i had to give that up that was strict bluegrass that we were playing then and so then i stole the guys from my dad's band is what happened and uh, there was a electric bass player and an electric guitar player. And I didn't want those electric instruments in there. There was nothing I could do about the electric guitar, but the bass, I got him to, to learn upright bass. And he did that. And he's so good at it. And I got used to the electric guitar and now it's in there and that's good. And we've also added a banjo player or a steel guitar player. And we've been going for a year now. And that's that's a brief history. That's awesome. <laughs> Up until now. So tell us a little bit about your music. You said you started out playing strictly bluegrass in your in your other band, but uh, what kind of music do you do now? Uh, it's still, I suppose, bluegrass at heart. Uh, some people get confused and still call it bluegrass. I guess bluegrass people, that makes them kind of mad when they hear people like me being called bluegrass. Uh, I don't mind hearing it, but I know that, that that's not what it is. Uh, I guess it is really rockabilly country it, it's uh that what they call americana or, or canadian i don't know but um it's bluegrass at heart what i'm playing if you took the band away it would be bluegrass my songs most of them anyway we've started i've started getting into some uh more 1950s style jivey things uh rockabilly things like that so i'm progressing but um it's bluegrass at heart with rockabilly added in and uh, we do some slow, you know, original country songs that I've done that have that, you know, 1960s country sound with the steel guitar and stuff. So it's a, a little bit of everything. All right. Yeah. Um, well, you're not that old. So how did you get into the music? Was it, how did you get into bluegrass? Uh, well, there was uh, the Northern Lights Bluegrass and Old Time Music Festival uh, that's at, located at Nest Creek Fest uh, site uh, most years. And that was always going on uh, when I was growing up. And uh, so I'd, I'd end up there every year around that time and listen to all the, that music and stuff. And, and uh, so that's sort of where it started. And I know that we listened to older music in the house growing up. It, it was around, like, I know we listened to lots of uh, Johnny Cash and Hank Williams and country stuff like that too, and newer you know newer uh 80s i guess that's still old but to me that's that's modern i can never tell the difference 
uh, that sort of stuff too my parents would listen to every now and then but just having the bluegrass there periodically was enough for me to to catch on because most kids don't really hear that whatsoever and uh so just having it there every once in a while it would catch caught my ear you know and and uh, i was quite fascinated by it and then what really got me into it is when i started learning about all the history and all the people involved and uh, <clears throat> so i'm a big fan of a fella named lester flat and the more i learned about all people such as him and stuff and and how things work the more i got interested and and uh, yeah, so and I take a lot of inspiration from people like him and stuff like that. Uh, some people ask me how I've come up with uh, my show and stuff that we put on. And, and a lot of it is trying as hard as I can to do the exact opposite of what people do now to try and be unique. So that means talking on stage uh, almost just as much as I am playing music. And so what I have to do there is I have to go back into old, old footage and old, uh, old Martha White Grand Ole Opry shows and stuff and watch and listen. And uh, there's a lot of uh, showmanship involved with those older fellows that used to play back then. It wasn't just go on and play your songs. You know, if you want to listen to the songs, you can buy the record, but they had to have a, a sort of a comedy side to it. You know, let's bring Minnie Pearl up here and get her to, to do her little act and so i like to i like to keep things uh, very entertaining but yeah that's going way back i've always you know it's always been around and so that's where it's where the inspiration has come from that's awesome i grew up uh somewhat similar to you actually it's kind of it's kind of funny my grandma plays auto harp um uh, and my grandpa back when he was alive he played guitar and uh, my dad played guitar and bass and we all would sit in grandma's kitchen and we'd do old hymns or you know bluegrass songs and that's how i grew up so when i found out that you were doing a show coming up i'm like well i, I just got to talk to you because like i find it so interesting people my age and younger they don't they don't know that music you know and it's interesting how you being younger is bringing that bringing it back and you know putting the effort in and doing the storytelling and you know that sort of side of things i think that's just that's an amazing thing that you're doing so kudos to you thank you um well then i guess the next thing what's your what's your most um i guess favorite musical achievement that you've come across or that you've done um well there's been so many things i guess i'm so happy that i can finally do this now that i'm out of school um, I, I waited a long, long time <laughs> to, to be able to, and when, you know, look at pictures of me when I was a little kid and stuff, I was always standing at a microphone singing Johnny Cash or something. And they said, I, I knew all the words and I don't know how and stuff when I was two years old and all that. But so I'm happy that I can finally do this. Uh, but the best achievement in the last year since I've been with this outfit, um, this well 2021 i guess but it came out this year we won uh four saskatchewan country music association awards i believe it was uh emerging artist of the year fans choice entertainer of the year songwriter of the year and alternative country album of the year uh, when i was nominated for six or or whatever it was i i thought you know be lucky if i could get one but i'm just happy to be nominated in there uh, by the last, by the third ballot, I still, I was in for four. And then I ended up getting all four. And, and when we found out about that, I was playing a show on stage. So while well, this was being announced. And so the only way I knew is when everybody would start cheering out in the crowd at their tables because they were watching on their phones. And I never really did have a chance to, to get excited about it because I had to keep my composure on stage and stuff. And... Uh, so I was just, I was happy about that. And I guess just shortly before that too, um, my album, the first album I did uh, called Retro Man um, was uh, named the second best or voted by the people anyway, second best uh, album in Saskatchewan for Saskatchewan Music uh, Awards. So that was, that I was very happy with that too. Uh, again, when it was, there was, uh, I don't know how there was a top 10 and there was probably near about 50 albums in there. I'm not sure for sure. Uh, but 
I just thought once again, you know, to be included in the long list, that's great. But when, you know, and I thought maybe if I get eight or nine, that's good. That's about it. But they're coming second place. I couldn't believe it. So those, those things, you know, this last year have been, have been probably the, the highest achievements as of yet with, with this. So. For sure. Do you have um, an artist, I guess, that you look up to or, you know, a mentor that you, you know, maybe want to follow in their footsteps i know you're talking about older artists but is there one in particular that maybe you just kind of like click with uh somebody still living or or whichever you could pick either okay i don't know offhand if there's anyone still <laughs> alive that that it has been a huge inspiration to me there's been people um like I never took, I, t I tried taking music lessons, but none of the instruments that I play now or no nothing that's included in the show or how I make my living came from lessons uh, or, or anybody that's living now. Uh, so it's kind of hard, like I, I was self-taught, so it's kind of hard to, um, to, to, find a person around now that's been an extreme influence. But like I said, that Lester Flat uh, passed away in 78 or 79, I think. So that's a while ago. But watching all of his shows and how he uh, how he conducted himself on stage and the jokes that he'd say and, and uh, uh, even how his voice would change going into show mode and then being backstage guy, you know what I mean? So all those things, a lot of a lot of our show is he's sort of the foundation in a way of, of the whole show and he played with a fella named earl scruggs and so it was flat and scruggs and the foggy mountain boys and um of course when i first got into bluegrass and playing the banjo it was earl scruggs that i liked lester he was just the guitar player and the singer nobody cared about him and i didn't until and then just through the years the last three years slowly transitioned and Lester ended up being the one that I found more because when you look behind everything and you you know they're all good musicians and stuff but none of that would have been without Lester being that front man and and having that foundation it was all revolving around him in the end and and once you once I realized that I realized how important that part of the show really is because I didn't have that with my last group. We did just play songs and we'd try and be awkward and funny. And it was okay. You know, people thought it was cute because there was this 15 and 16 year old best friends playing these songs, but that wouldn't have cut it if we had continued on now. It would have been, it would have fizzled out by now. So, so I would say uh, above anybody else off the top of my head, Lester Flat would be the, the uh, mentor or whatever if, if, yeah. if you will um but i mean there's uh a few people around now like uh i could mention a fellow named keith bartlett that's from north battleford area uh he he uh used to live across the street from me and i did go over there and jam a lot and he teach me lots about about things and and uh, i had the pleasure of of uh, of uh, sitting in on some lessons with a fellow named charlie cushman and he is uh, basically a replica of Earl Scruggs. He was able to meet Earl Scruggs and, and uh, play with him and talk with him. So it was really, really nice to be able to sit and listen to what he had to say and learn from him. So those are a few people still alive that I can think of that had been very helpful. Yeah. Sure. I have another strange question for you. If you could go back and attend any concert, is there a specific country artist concert that you would want to attend? uh back in time yeah uh yeah definitely flat and scruggs show for sure uh uh who else i i guess might as well go see elvis or johnny cash you just <laughs> have to uh but yeah no the top top of the list would be Fla lester flat and earl scruggs and the foggy mountain boys that's I awesome think. yeah mm -hmm. have you ever had an opportunity to meet any um i guess country artists that are you know maybe doing big things right now uh actually we were playing this is just off the top of my head uh we were playing at the uh, sheraton hotel in saskatoon 
last year for Jazz Festival. Uh, so that's been just about a year ago now, or just over a year ago. And all of a sudden, Washboard Union walked in because uh, they had been playing across the street in the Besbro Gardens. And so there they were. Uh, I didn't recognize them because I don't I don't keep up to date with the new artists. But <laughs> my dad knew who they were and and uh, and everything, everybody else. But I, I didn't know. To me, they were just people sitting there. And uh, but when I they were and they they were quite happy with what we were doing, and so we got to talk to them in the lobby and stuff because they were staying at that hotel that night. So it ended up working out good. We got a picture with them and got to talk to them and and had a nice conversation. Uh, there's another band uh, called Doc Walker. I'm not sure. Apparently they're. Uh, doing well too. I know that I met them at Ness Creek a few years back. Um, that's really cool. Yeah, I, I'm not sure off the top of my head anybody else that I've I've had the pleasure of meeting besides uh, Charlie Cushman there. So yeah, that's cool. I know um, I had the opportunity once to uh, interview Loretta Lynn's granddaughter because um, mm-hmm. she does she has a show that she does kind of like a tribute type show. Um, and then also um, Conway Twitty's grandson, because they do a show together. So right. I actually got to MC for Conway Twitty's grandson. And I was just like, I can't like function, you guys. This is crazy. Yeah. And no, nobody else understands. They're just like, he's just some guy. I'm like, no, you don't understand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I heard about them first, because when I worked with Ira Amundsen is his name. That's the fellow I worked with before, the Bluegrass Band. We went to Nashville. Uh, because he won a banjo scholarship to go to a, a mandolin a music camp there. And so we went and we went to the Ernest Tubb record shop while we were there. And then they were telling us about how uh, that's used to be a theater. And that's how where Ernest Tubb would have all these people like Elvis and Loretta Lynn. He got them started when they were quite young. That's another thing I like about back then. You always had, it still happens now, but I, I don't think uh, that it happens as often where somebody will take you under their wing and make sure and see that you get up to the top and make a living doing it. It's sort of a competition now, uh, which is too bad. Um, I'm not, I don't, I don't like competition. It makes me nervous, but, um, but that's what Ernest Tubb did. You know, he wasn't, he wasn't a very talented person. uh, Some would say, and he would say that himself. Uh, He wasn't always, uh, you know, like out of everybody else who wasn't the best singer, and he knew that. So what he did instead is he used his position to uh, get other people started. And so I first heard about Loretta Lynn's grandson or granddaughter and and uh, Conway Twitty's grandson doing something there at that shop. They were going to be putting something on that night, but we weren't going to be able to see it. And uh, so yeah, that was. At, oh, and then while we were there, this is what I was getting to. While we were there, we stopped at the station inn for the bluegrass camp thing. And in walks Ricky Skaggs through the back door. And so he, uh, <laughs> so Ira had been playing on stage there, the same stage that Ricky Skaggs was coming on to. And so Ira was in the back of the station inn on the, against the wall. And Ricky had to get back there to the green room. So he, his belly ended up rubbing against Ira's. But neither of us had the guts to go shake his hand and meet him. But the closest I got to him, he was really rushed. So I didn't want to annoy him. But I was standing there at the back door. And uh, all these people, of course, oh, yeah, they knew Ricky Skeggs. He probably had no idea who they were. But they were all coming and saying, nice to see you and give him a hug and stuff. And and uh, he was trying to go. And people kept hugging him. And this one guy gave him a hug. And he we made eye contact, him and I. And that's as close as we got. I didn't dare go any further. But... <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. That's an awesome story. Um, I guess the the main point that I wanted to chat with you is though you have a show coming up in Watson. Doors open at one p.m. and the show starts at two p.m. and tickets are available at the Watson Pharmasave and uh, or or you can call Jim at three zero six two eight seven seven one three zero or Roxanne at three zero six three two seven seven nine seven zero and you can get your tickets there and. And uh, we're looking forward to it. We'll put on a, a good old timey show. And- yeah, I'm excited to go. I know here at the station, we're going to be giving away um, a set of tickets. So 
I'm I'm excited to uh, see who wins that. I have a few people in mind who I think are going to be the ones that call in to win. So we'll oh, yeah. see if I'm right. <laughs> oh, yes. um, is there anything else that you wanted to add, Jake, before I before I let you go? Uh, well, you can uh, find us on Facebook and Instagram and, of course, YouTube and even TikTok now I'm trying out. I don't know how good I am at it, but we're giving <laughs> it a try. And uh, also the website is jakebodlin.com. You can find more, inf more information there. And also uh, it, you'll be able to find upcoming shows listed there as well. Uh, so that's the place to go if you're looking for upcoming shows such as the one in Watson. So. All, All right. right. Well, thank you so much for taking some time to chat with us. And uh, I look forward to seeing the show. I'm going to come out. So. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for the, thanks for the chat. I look forward to seeing you there. Thank you so much. Good night, everyone.